Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this picture. This extreme close-up of the center of an orchid was lit with a single flash, but owes much of its impact to the focus. The front-to-back sharpness is down to automated focus stacking, a technique which is now available on numerous camera platforms. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK, so this is the table, and on here I've got a piece of black cloth. And that's just there, just to stop any uh, spurious reflections affecting the subject. So for the subject, I've got this orchid. I'm just going to place that about there somewhere. OK, so with that all set now, the next thing to do would be to look at the camera position. I've got the camera here on a tripod. Uh, that is going to be essential. Uh, I will be taking multiple images from exactly the same uh, point of view. Uh, so you're going to need a reasonably robust tripod to do this. OK, so I'll just point the camera vaguely at the subject. And we'll turn the camera on. There we are. And with the camera on, what I'll do is just generally set up the shot. So what I'm going to do is just look through the viewfinder here and wind this up ever so slightly to get me to somewhere near the height of the top flower here. About there should do it. And we'll just roughly focus that up. And using the geared head on the top of the tripod here, I'll just centre the image. There we are. Something like that. OK, so that's roughly set in the right position. Now, the camera is obviously tethered into Capture One software, so I can show all the settings that I have on the camera at the moment. So it's in full manual mode. I've got a shutter speed of 125th of a second. Now, that's the uh, focal plane shutter flash sync speed for this particular camera. Uh, I've got an ISO of 100, and at the moment, I've got an aperture set of f8. Now, that's possibly going to change, but that will do as a starting point. So just with those settings and no flash set yet, what I'll do is grab an image just to make sure I don't get any contamination from the house lights. So we've got a bit of a ghost of an image in there. And that is uh, the contamination from the house lights. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I'm probably not going to be using an aperture of f8. I'll probably use an aperture closer to f16. So let me just change that. There we go. And now we'll just repeat the uh, process and take another test. And there we are. We've got no contamination now. So it's always a good idea to set your aperture first before you actually set any of the studio lights up at all. Because then you can set the light to match the aperture that you've chosen and not the other way around. OK, so the next thing to do would be to set a light. And what I'm going to do is just use this small flash head. And I'm just going to place this at the back here, just behind the flower. Now, hopefully, if I've got all this lined up, the flower itself will hide the flash head, hopefully. Let me just check that in the viewfinder. Yeah, that looks about right. OK, so with that now set, what I can do is I'll grab an image just as a test, just to see what sort of exposure we're getting. So as a test, as a starting point, that's not too bad. The exposure is not too far away from what I want, but the whole image isn't really close enough yet. Uh, what I'd like to do is get this uh, a little fuller in the frame. So what I'm going to do is move the uh, plant here a little bit further forwards. So let me just do that. Go about there somewhere. OK, so I'll need to refocus that. So just roughly looking through the viewfinder. There we are. And then just 
move it over a little using the geared head controls here and possibly just lean the whole camera over a bit just to square it up that's really the advantage of a geared head it gives you a lot of very precise control over exactly where your image is going to be okay so with those changes made what I'll do now is just grab another image and see what it looks like now okay so this is now filling the frame a little better than it was before however the exposure has gone down quite a long way uh, and that's because in effect I have moved the flash further away from the subject so the original plant was about here somewhere so I'll need to just move this a bit closer so we'll move it into about here and again hopefully it's still directly behind uh, the flower there so in that new position let's just try that again yes it's a little brighter but I think I need uh, at least another stop so what I'm going to do is just add one stop of energy to that flash. So I'll just bring up the flash control, select that light, and we'll just add one stop to that. So with that change made, I'll just grab an image. There we are. That's looking a bit better. It could still do with a little bit of fill-in at the front here, though. So what I'm going to do, instead of using another flash at the front, I'm just going to reflect some of the light coming from this back onto the plant again. And the way I'm going to do that is just use a piece of card. So here I have just a piece of old card with a hole in the center. And I'm just going to position this in front of the lens like that. There we are. So I've just suspended that on this C stand so that it will reflect some of the light back onto the subject again, hopefully. OK, so with that in position, let's grab that again and see what it looks like now. There, that's reflected some light in and filled in this area a little. So this is what we had before. And this is what we've got now. OK, so it's coming along. Uh, but this area is a little distracting in the corner here, so I'd just like to uh, do something about that and just maybe fill it in. So the way I'm going to do that is just use uh, this small flag, which I've just got in this uh, retort stand. And this is just a piece of diffusion material. And I'm just going to place this so it's slightly behind one side of the plant. There we go, something like that. And hopefully that should just fill in that little piece uh, to, to give us a white background instead of a black one. There we are. That seems to have filled it in very well. You can see that this area is now white. I've also got a bit more contrast in this side of the petals. So this is what we had before. And this is what we've got now. OK, so with those little changes done, I think as far as the exposure and the composition is concerned, we're about there. So what I need to do now is just set up the automated focus stacking, which I can do from the top of the camera here. OK, so I need to just select the focus stacking, like so. And the first thing I want to do is set a far focus point and at this point it's a good idea to use live view to actually precisely focus the camera so I'll just start that up make that a bit bigger and I'll zoom all the way in to 100% I actually want to focus on the very back of this part of the flower so that's just that piece that's in here so I can use these controls now, like so, to change the focus point. So 
So where I'm happy with exactly where it is, which I think is about there, I can then log that in the camera control. So the number 2406 is where I am at the moment, so I'll just log that into the far focus point, like so. Now having done that, it's just a case of repeating that for the near focus point. So I'll just move the area of interest somewhere down here, and we'll just refocus the lens on that part of the plant. Very fine control is possible doing it this way. There we are. So with that done, I can get rid of live view and once again log that point on the camera application. So 3186 is our near point. So this is set to do 20 images, which should be sufficient for this size of subject. So it's all ready to go. So what I can do is just press the button and off it will go. Okay, so now we have 20 images, uh, all with a slightly different focus point, uh, all captured and ready to uh, stack together in focus stacking software, which is where we're going to go next. So this is the focus stacking software I prefer to use, which is Helicon Focus 8. And I've already loaded all of those 20 images into uh, this software. So here they all are. So with all those loaded, what I'm going to do now is just ask it to render out a focus stacked image. And it will just go through and process each image and make one output file. Here we are. So this is the output file. And I think you can see straight away that this is very, very sharp. Now if I just zoom into a little bit of it, you can see that we've got lots of detail and the whole thing is sharp right from the very front to the very back. So what I will do now is just export this into Photoshop just to do any final post-production. So here we are in Photoshop and I've loaded up the file of the image that I made in the Helicon focus stacking software. So what am I going to do to this? Well, I think I might just adjust the levels a little globally throughout the image. So I've just gone to image here, just go to adjustment and levels. And I think I'm just going to compress those ever so slightly and generally reduce the contrast a bit and make it a bit brighter. Something like that. So that's the before and that's the after. Just a small change. Okay, and I think the next thing logically to do would be just to have a look at a crop. I've set a particular ratio of 16 by 9 as I'll be using this for video. Uh, and I just want to ever so slightly square up the image. I did that a little bit in the camera, but it's not quite enough, so it just needs a little bit more, something like that. And I'd like this precisely in the middle. Uh, so I'm just going to move that ever so slightly over. Like that. Yes, I think that's okay. We'll just commit to that. So having done that, I'll just zoom in and we'll just have a little look around the image, see if there's anything which needs cleaning up. I don't think there is. So if I hold down the space bar, I can pan around the image. I've got some little bits of dust on the flower here, which have come out. Uh, so I can just quickly retouch those. Uh, so I'm just going to use the spot healing brush tool just to get rid of those. 
I just ma work my way across the image, just taking out all the various little bits of dust. There we go. And I think in here somewhere I have the remnants of a small animal. Um, so again, I can just remove those. I'm going to need a smaller brush. Go back to my normal size. And just carry on across the whole image. The major part of the image is very clean. Lots of detail. Like so. And here you can see that because I used so many images to make up the final one here, I have very gentle transitions from one image to the next, which has given me a very good focus rendition. OK, so there we have it. So with the application of a fairly simple single light lighting technique, where I can recycle some of the light into the front of the subject, and by using automated focus stacking, I've ended up with a subject which is truly sharp from the front to the back and has a lot of impact. And I think overall that's worked rather well. OK, well I hope you liked watching how I made that image and if you like watching these sort of things do click on the other images as they appear and don't forget to subscribe. Oh and hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching.